Good evening on this Monday, Thursday of Holy Week as we gather again. This evening our Lenten observance comes to an end and we gather with Christians around the world to celebrate the three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Tonight we remember Christ's last meal with his disciples, but the central focus is his commandment that we live out the promise embodied in this meal. As Jesus washed his disciples' feet, so we are called to give and receive love and humble service to one another. Formed into a new body in Christ through this holy meal, we are transformed by the mercy we have received and carry it into the world. Departing worship in solemn silence, we anticipate the coming days. I want to love you, Lord, much more than I do. I want to love you, Lord, much more than I do. And learn to seek your face and the knowledge of your grace. I want to love you. Birds in the sky sing their songs to you, and the trees in the fields lift their arms to you. And I want to sing, and I want to lift my arms to you. I want to love you, Lord. Much more than I do, I want to love you, Lord, much more than I do, and learn to seek your face, and the knowledge of your grace, I want to love you. I want to Birds in the sky sing their songs to you, and the trees in the fields Lift Much their arms to you, and I want to sing, and I want to lift my arms to you. Amen. Tonight I've put three visual images, but refer to two especially. Above my left shoulder, one can see the Last Supper which is one of the things we lift up on this night, Jesus' institution of the Last Supper. It's a special one we keep at the end of our hallway. Uh, got this from Tosco in Mexico, the Silver City. And then the second emphasis on Jesus' washing of the disciples' feet, the sculpture in front of us, which was purchased in Nazareth on my trip to the Holy Land after that wonderful gift you gave me as a sabbatical trip. And so we have those two images this evening. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people. And in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life in faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson from Exodus is the story of the Passover as the Jews come out of Egypt for their liberation. This will be the same Passover celebration that Jesus celebrates with his disciples on the night before his death as he institutes the Last Supper. The first lesson comes from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 4 and 11 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat, it, eat of it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. 
The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. <coughs> Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Second lesson from Corinthians is Paul sharing the words of Jesus at that Last Supper. The second lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way that he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You too may go ahead and leave. Thank you. Our gospel lesson comes from St. John, the 13th chapter. This is the story of the foot washing. Now before the festival of the Passover... Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are masters greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Instead of me delivering a message this evening, hopefully on the Facebook page, you will be able to bring up, you um, can either wait till the end of this service rather than interrupting this part, but bring up online on the Facebook page the sermon by the bishop, the ELCA bishop of the Houston area synod, Michael Reinhardt for his 10 or 11 minute message to share on this night. 
you will help sing the refrains, Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. And I'll sing the verses. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet. Master who acts as a slave to them together. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are wealthy and poor, varied in color and race. Neighbors are nearby and far away. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we will serve. These are the ones we will love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Jesu, Jesu, Fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneel at the feet of our friends, silently washing their feet. This is the way we will live with you. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of love, unite your church in its commitment to humble service. Make us your faithful disciples. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us in self-giving acts of kindness. Let us love one another as you have loved us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, tend to flocks, fields, and vineyards. Bring favorable weather for crops to grow. Guide the hands of those who cultivate farm and garden. Let the earth flourish so all may eat and be satisfied. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of love, you give us a new commandment to have love for one another. We give thanks for organizations that respond to disasters and for agencies that offer relief and humanitarian aid to populations in need. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of love, Give ear to all who call upon you for any need of body or spirit, especially those who suffer from this pandemic. Pride, provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are unemployed or underemployed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of love, you invite us to your table of mercy. Heal all divisions between members of this assembly. Extend the hospitality of this table beyond these walls, that your love and welcome be made known to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, glorify your servants who walk by faith in this life and who now feast with you. Inspire us by the sacrifice of those who were imprisoned, persecuted, or martyred for their faith. These days we especially remember Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We finish in silence.